Xbox. So Valentine's Day is coming up. And did you know that we're selling a few Valentine's Day grams in the commons? You can, you know, they're free, by the way. Just wanted to put that out there. You can sign up for them before school, during lunch, and they'll be delivered uh, February 11th to the 12th. And you can start ordering them on the 2nd, and you can go through the 10th. So, uh, yeah, you know, just uh, if you want to send me one, you know, um, I am single, so... Have you tried Green Hills Breakfast in the Culinary Kitchen? If not, stop by A300 between 815 and 845 to get some inexpensive drinks and snacks. Hey guys, my name is Shari Brunson. I'm going to talk to y'all about the district's decision to change the learning platform to Schoology in a year full of different obstacles and changes. We started off with Thrivus and then went to Google Classroom and now we're on Schoology. So I'm going to ask different teachers and students their opinions on the new learning platform. Um, so when presented with Schoology versus um, Google Drive, Google Classroom, those kinds of things, um, would like to, I would rather stick with um, Google Classroom, Google Drive, just because we already made that switch midway into the year with having started with Thrivist. Couldn't even wrap my brain around switching a third time. And so I'm also a parent of Wilson County Schools, so my teacher side and my parent side was just like, no, I can't switch again. Um, I would have to say that I prefer Google Classroom. I have used Schoology at a different school um, in Metro Nashville schools um, before coming here, but Google Classroom has more functionality and more usefulness for students, I think. I think that in Schoology, the assessment piece for students to take tests allows teachers to create different types of questions. With Google Classroom, you just kind of are creating a Google Form test. Um, so I can see why the district would move to Schoology, um, because it would allow teachers to have different ways to make sure that students are understanding the material. When we had to change to Thrivist um, back in the fall, that was a huge switch for me. I've relied on Google Classroom for the last five years. As an AV production teacher, Google Classroom works really well for me because it stores lots of really large video files and it's very easy for me to access it, also easy for my students to submit the files. When we changed to Schoology, um, I, when I saw the learning platform, I actually was encouraged. It was a lot like Thrivist, but it was also a little bit like Google Classroom. So I thought maybe like this could be the one that like hits all the marks. I don't think there is one platform that is the answer to everything. I still prefer Google Classroom for video submissions, but I prefer Schoology now for easy to get the grades in the grade book. So I like them both. I, I, I think a blend between the two is actually like the perfect solution for us. I personally don't like Schoology because as it is, we have eight classes and we only come two times a week. So I feel like we need an easier platform to use. And we've been using Google Classroom our whole life compared to we've switched three times this year on what we've been using. Want to help out with commonly overlooked donation items? Visit the Her Drive boxes. They're open until February 26th. We take cash donations as well. Um, my name's Jessica Cantrell, and I'm one of our school counselors here at Green Hill High School. And this week is National School Counseling Week. And National School Counseling Week is a little bit different because it's not about appreciation for counselors, although we do like a little appreciation. Um, it's about advocating for our profession. And so one of the things that I wanted to talk about is why we prefer being called school counselors versus guidance counselors. And in order to talk about that, it's a little bit of a history lesson. But guidance counselors first came around because we were, it was our goal to talk about and help get you into a vocation. And so it was vocational guidance. And it started a long time ago um, and really gained steam during World War II because we really wanted to help people find their vocational guidance. But shortly after World War II, we realized that students needed more help. And so we then started branching out to be called school counselors because we realized that it's not just vocational guidance that students need help with. 
They need help with social emotional skills, college and career readiness, and academic counseling. And finally, around 2000, we got the American School Counseling Association um, kind of mindsets and behaviors, kind of a standard for school counselors. And we've been following that ever since. So essentially, the difference between a guidance counselor and a school counselor is that a guidance counselor really just works with a few kids, mostly in high school, and really just trying to get them into a job or a career. But a school counselor works with pre-K all the way through high school. We work with all students, and we try to see every student every year. And we cover social emotional skills, college and career readiness, and academic counseling. Green Hills basketball programs have proven to be a dominating force in the district throughout their inaugural season. This year has looked different for many athletes though due to the effects of the pandemic. Many athletes have been forced to lose their season or play in empty gyms without fans. I spoke with players and coaches about how the lack of fans has affected their performance this season. I always tell our kids there's not, nothing like playing high school sports. Uh, you can't beat it. There's always, you know, looking up and seeing your family members in the stands or seeing your classmates. It's, it doesn't get better than that. So. How does attendance affect your performance? Um, I'd say not having a student section is pretty important to us. So last year when we were at Mount Juliet, having a student section at every game was really important, helped us get all the way to districts and then regionals. This year it's a little bit different, I would say, not having student section. Because when you know you get those crazy moments and it's super exciting, you hit a big three or get a big dunk, we just don't hear that. But I mean, other than that, it really doesn't change how we play, I think. so. I think that we perform well as a team no matter who's there, but I think we also like would get more hyped up if people were there, like a student section. When I went to Wilson Central, like we had a few big games, we had a lot of people there, and those were probably like my most fun games at Wilson Central. No, for sure. I think the crowd really does help play a big part because it's like six man on the court, and it really helps shift the momentum because if we can't bring the energy ourselves if we're feeling down, I guess, but the crowd really helps us keep it going. So that, it does play a big part, but we just have to focus on ourselves and trying to bring it, come together and bring the energy ourselves. I feel like we have not less energy, but it's kind of like dialed down, I guess you could say, because we don't get as much energy from fans if something big happens. Uh, do you feel more focused without the fans during your games? Not having fans is all right, I could say, but I feel focused no matter what. Even if fans are here or aren't here, it doesn't really affect how I play. I would say as a team, we're like focused a lot anyways, and we're part of a family that we think that like our team comes first, and I don't think people's attendance like affects us. So do you feel like you're getting cheated out of a season since like your friends aren't allowed to come and watch you? I mean, a little bit, but it's going to be the same way for them. So. I'm not going to say I don't feel cheated out of it because I'm getting to play the game that I love to do, so it doesn't really matter. Um, I think that for me, like, I would love for a lot of more people to be there and see us play, especially because it's our first year and we have a lot of good talent on our team, but I don't feel like cheated out of season because I still get to play basketball. Kind of just because not everybody that I want to come see me play can come see me play, and that's just, it's my last year, so I feel like it'd be better if we had everybody that wanted to could come see me so I don't think overall it's affecting the athletic performance I think it took a while for the players to get used to it and now that they're getting used to it um, the motivation is there as the season goes on the games seem to mean a little bit more and um, I, I just think everybody's adapted to it and I also think they're really looking forward to next week where some fans will be coming back into the games because ultimately, the ultimate goal for us is to win, and um, however we have to go about doing that is what we uh, what we try to accomplish every night. And looking forward to big wins we are against our district rival Mount Juliet at this Friday's game. The TWSAA has lifted some of the COVID restrictions. We are looking forward to finishing the season strong and having some fans in attendance to support.